Hi everybody, this is Pramita here and uh, <clears throat> today I'm going to show you how to create a you know, very neutral kind of background uh, for your collage journal cards or tags or whatever. So what I usually do is I um, use not very expensive but a standard quality um, paper on which I glue my neutral, neutrish, neutralish, you know, very generic kind of <clears throat> papers. And then I go back, uh, cut them up later on as I require, because uh, I don't want to cut them ahead of time. Uh, maybe I'm working on a different kind of uh, size or whatever. So uh, I'm going to show you how you can keep all these, because, um, you know, once you create these papers, they are pretty much uh, like single sheets so what you can do is you can collage on a composition notebook uh, for uh, this what I've done is I've chosen some school notebook this is a soft palm notebook and it's uh, around 180 pages and uh, it's a weird kind of, I think this is an A4 this is a this is not a composition size. This is a smaller than that. I don't know this exact size of this. But I tend to uh, collage on a notebook like this because this is the only one I had close by. And I'm, the papers are not great. So I thought that I'm going to use this up in a different way. So I'm going to show you what I've done to this. Uh, I have promised that I'm going to do videos of this kind. So, but <laughs> something or the other. <coughs> just you know comes up and just get, gets delayed so this is how I create some generic backgrounds now what I do is after I finish quite a few projects what I usually have is I ha I'm left with uh, a lot of scraps which I really want to use up and you know make use of so I create backgrounds like this whereby I can add anything that I would like and once I cut these up according to my requirement, I will back it up with the stained paper. So this gets pretty sturdy because you already have a layer of paper on which you have glued paper. And then you're going to back this up with another sheet of paper, which actually is three layers thick. So that, that's pretty sturdy. So you need not worry about the quality of the uh, notebook that you're uh, collaging on. So I'm just uh, letting you see what I have done. So these are some generic backgrounds that I have um, done and I can add anything to this for that matter. So I'm going to show how you can just jazz it up. Um, like suppose you have this um, image and you can just put this over here and cut this down and you instantly will have a um, you know, background so uh, it gets a lot easier to collage, you know, and this you can do while watching television or Netflix or whatever. So I'm going to show you how I do this. There's no rule to this. First things first, and you can start off with book pages, which I usually do, and I'll show you. So you can start off with book pages, music papers scraps of um, you know magazine papers um, anything anything you want so I'm just going to keep this so I'm just going to line this up I hope I don't run out of glue <laughs> sometimes what I do is I ink up the edges but um, that's not necessary basically you can do it without uh, inking the edges and then of course you can stitch whatever catches your fancy so what I've started doing is I've started collaging from the center and I'm working both ways I'm going towards the back as well as towards the front you know and uh, I have this um, very thin uh, paper this is uh, scrapbook paper sort of thing and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add bits and pieces I want to use up this paper so you can see how I am creating 
backgrounds i hope you can see so you can use up a lot of your scraps in creating backgrounds so when you are adding some kind of um some kind of journal card to your project or journal you can add some collage cards to that so you can get rid of some um stash that you have as well as you know you can um you can sort of um create an interesting kind of journal ephemera to so you can make those and this is how i create generic backgrounds in a notebook so but when i'm doing it on a piece of paper when my surface area is restricted i will work in a different manner uh mostly the same way perhaps but not exactly same so i'm going to uh i'm just sticking into my stash to see if i have anything else interesting that i can use um there have a lot of papers that can be used i'm not sure uh so i <clears throat> i don't know i might be doing a few more ephemera packs ephemera holder slash pack sort of thing so here i did keep some neutral papers i don't know where they keep them did i keep them here i hope so because this is how it's looking as you can see they are pretty generic and you can use them for any way if you have any kind of misprint while you're printing your kits you can easily use them as it are and i'm just uh, so this is one tub that i have and i usually uh, you know keep things here that i want to use up as quickly as possible uh, so i have some grid paper that i can use i just as i said this background is going to be very neutral so um i would stick to things like that because then i can always go back and add a floral element or some other kind of bird image or anything uh, but if i already decide on what i um i'm doing so again i'm taking these papers off i had selected some papers that i'm going to use so i'm just digging into that sorry guys this is just a mishmash you know when you're working with scraps um it becomes really horrible you know uh you get just drowned in uh things like this and i really i'm sorry if this annoys you but um uh i try to keep my um scraps at a minimum because this is how i use them up and um i think this is a very good way of uh you know book page the ones that i'm not going to use anywhere uh some scrap papers i'm just bringing things out you know um so yeah you can use these up you can see how things go all things that have gone wrong in your projects you can just simply cut these up and use them for that matter so i'm going to do that and i'm also going to see if i have anything else that i will use or yeah so usually i i use bigger scraps of paper but sometimes when you are saddled with a lot of random scraps with you know you don't know how to use them up or how you can make use of them you can simply just start gluing okay so i think today we will use up a lot of scraps so we good and as you can see i have this many that i would like to use as generic backgrounds 
So these are mostly scraps from, I'll, I'll talk you through the scraps. So this is a vintage receipt that I have and I'm going to use it in a collage. So uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to tear this like so and use it like here. Okay. And sometimes what I do is I go back and add washi tapes to the empty spaces or stamp around them. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're perfect or not. It's only you're creating a background. So you need not be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, that's the beauty, you know. Perfection is not required. So I don't... I can't pick this up. I wanted to, but anyways. So this is how I'm doing this part up. And um, I can add some more stuff like this one. And I'm going to add it. So I'm going to add like this. So I'm going to add this. Usually I keep, um, you know, one of the edges straight so that I can line that up with the back, you know. So this is a scrap piece that I had from a stamp area paper and I've just hung on to it basically. So I'm just going to line this up. You can use your uh, wet glue, PVA glue, craft glue, whatever. But I found that uh, craft glues uh, often tend to be a bit more messy and what I do is after I have cut out the you know the journal cards or tags or whatever I tend to um, I tend to uh, seal them so if I have any kind of confusion what I'll do is I'll seal them so I'm going to lift this up a little bit and I think this is going to look better so I'm going to glue the rest. So you don't need to worry. You can always go back and seal it up once you have laid down your pieces. So I'm not going to seal it right away. I'm only going to seal it when I've made the journal cards. Because that way I'll be sure that my image on top is also going to be securely, uh, you know, fixed. And it's not going anywhere. So I have my sort of a generic background done. And I'm not going to cover everything. I have this tag that I had messed up. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that um, over here. Maybe. If you can see. Yeah. So I'm going to add that. So I think this collage process... Uh, will be going on for some time and uh, in my next part I'll show you how I make journal cards out of this so I have completed one page so I would suggest that you do it on one notebook that will help you keep two things you you will not ever misplace your collaged pages which I often do at least uh, I'm not sure about others and uh, second is that um, since they are in one single place, it will be easier for you to keep things organized. You know, crafting also means a lot of, you know, organization because when you can't find what you require at the right moment, then I don't know, my, <laughs> I get so harried that my husband uh, asks me that if he can help to look for that or anything of that sort, which is absolutely no, no, he can't uh, because it's um, he wouldn't be able to find it. He doesn't know anything about what I'm up to. So uh, that's one thing. And the second thing is when you're collaging, what happens is your pages tend to buckle up. You know, when you're doing it on a notebook, as you close this up, this lays flat and it becomes so much easier for you to handle that paper. So I would suggest that you go in for a notebook, whether in this size or in a larger size, whatever, 
and it doesn't matter whether you have a line page or a white page or whatever because if you can back it up with uh, another paper which most of us will eventually so it doesn't matter you know so you have all your collage backgrounds in one place and they are lying flat and you will see if I turn the pages that they have this ability to buckle up a little bit but once they are done they lie flat you know like this I have added washi tapes here and there just to you know use some of them and use up some of them and I think they have come out pretty well and I'm going to go on working with these kind of collages so if you want to see more of this video then please subscribe and uh, I'll show you how I create a journal card out of a generic background like this or this or this or uh, any for that matter or you can also do one thing if you have something in mind like if you're working on a vintage floral botanical whatever journal you can always simply go back and cut things up down like this like this page I have already used some floral elements in this page so I need not add anything much except a little bit of a label or some word or something of that sort otherwise like a page like this you can add anything you can take a journal card like this and just imagine you can you can just make it like this and cut it up and see how it looks so instantly you'll get a pop and that makes things so much attractive so this is how you can create larger uh, collage backgrounds but I'm also going to show you how you can make your collage backgrounds in smaller scale like this is like cutting down a bigger paper but you can also cut down the paper first and then go on and do your collage so both the techniques are a little bit different and when you're doing backgrounds like this you sh uh, ideally you should use bigger scraps of paper but it's not always like that there are no rules you can use smaller papers because uh, at the end of the day you're going to cut it up and you'll only get to see bits and pieces of that background you're not going to see the entire background so it doesn't matter that much and uh, I'll show you in my next video how I'm going to cut these backgrounds down um, add journal cards and create um, journal ephemera for my you know projects that I'm uh, doing right now so um, so watch out for the second part whereby I show you that how I'm going to use these ne neutral kind of backgrounds the one that we had just created and um, how we can jazz this up with uh, some journal cards like this I don't know did I take it out no I don't yeah so I have this journal card so I can easily put it over here and you can see how it matches with this uh, flesh toned uh, you know peachy kind of um, pink and a little bit of book page will come into the picture and a little bit of this yellow is going to come into this picture so that's not planned that just happens so if you want to put it like this that's fine too because you get this background this background this background so it's totally up to you how you want to place your focal point so um, I'll show you in my next video how I'm going to transform these uh, generic backgrounds into making uh, some journal cards or tags of for that for my next project and uh, you can watch me do that so try to create a neutral background with neutral colors like book pages music papers uh, very light um, uh, neutral colored uh, scrapbook paper scraps that you have just lay them down in no order whatsoever so I'm going to do another and then we're going to wind this up so I have this scrap this side is absolutely neutral I'm not going to use the alphabet anymore so I'm going to take this up just okay so I'm going to just cover this horrid pink fuchsia pink sort of thing which is absolutely no no so I'm going to glue this up and no pressure you can just um, use your wet glue also but 
I found personally wet glue makes the paper buckle a lot so I don't want that right away um, so that's why I don't use that so, so that's done and I also have this um, receipt sort of thing which I can use so I can use it over here yeah I think I'm going to use it over here I hope you can see it so I'm going to use it over here as you can see I'm just using up whatever scraps I have at hand I just don't let that scrap to go out of control so whenever I have finished two or three journals or projects or whatever uh, and have enough scraps to create a background I just start working on it I don't think too much I just lay things down so I'm going to add this and maybe I'm going to fill these up with washi I'm not sure so that needs to be seen so I'm just cleaning this up and you know it's a very um, relaxing exercise um, at least for me and I found that so many other junk journalers also enjoy gluing stuff down. This is really, so this is a letter sort of thing I have. And I think I'm going to use it as a background. So I'm going to use it over here um, so that I can, you know, get bits and pieces of that. That's a scrapbook, part of a scrapbook paper. Interesting one and I have just some bits and pieces left so I'm going to lay this over here so that's how it's going to look and I have a long strip here I'm not worried about at all so you'll see why so I'm going to take this scrap and I might add this over here so I'm going to take this off because I don't want this to be covered so I'm going to just lay this down and if you have any uh, you know scraps that you are unable to use in any kind of projects uh, that had you know sometimes we do have things like that like we do have papers which we really can't use anywhere we must have used in some other some project and then we we are not doing any kind of same kind of project so um, so I have this lace uh, plastic lace background that I had done with tea staining you know a while back when everybody was doing the lace the doily and stuff like that so I did that too yeah uh, but Anyways, it took a lot of, um, too much of effort. Uh, so I'm not going to cover this tiny bit. So maybe I'm going to cover this. No. So I'm not going to cover any of the rest of these parts. Maybe I'll go back and add some labels when I put something down. So I'm going to just leave it like this. And as you can see, since this notebook is very, uh, this is a wide A5 size. Uh, A5 size. So that's why it gets filled up very quickly and I can get two large journal cards or around three journal cards um, from this page not many but when you're doing it on a single sheet you will get around five to six journal card stands etc so that's another page done as and you know since this is a very a reasonably sized page I found that the you know sense of accomplishment was much higher so I felt like I've done something I've used up something so um, uh, if you have issues like this like I have then I think you should start with uh, a size like this which is not too small and which is not too big also so I think this is a very good process in which you can use up a lot of your scraps and um, so yeah so watch out for the next part whereby I'm going to uh, work on these backgrounds and show you how I go about it. So bye everybody. Thank you.